Hi everyone, it's Clyde at Vibrant Soap, and today I'm going to be making a chocolate amber soap. I got the idea when Kevin Devine of Divinely Design Soaps um, shared this new fragrance that he's using called Chocolate Amber from Bam Brambleberry, and I wanted to try it. I'm a sucker for chocolate. Um, I've already done my color tutorial, and you see me looking around at variations of brown, so if you've ever kind of wondered what you can do with brown, that's the tutorial for you. I'm not going to choose between all these browns that I played around with. Why not use all of them? Uh, chocolate's kind of decadent anyway, so I might have gotten myself in trouble by trying all these different browns, but let's give it a shot. Let's get started. Brambleberry's new chocolate amber fragrance. It does smell really cool. Rich, chocolatey. But uh, it is one of those fragrances that browns, and you know, it's a dreaded thing that we have to plan around fragrances that brown our soaps. And it's always, to me, sort of working in the dark because you don't know what the effect of your mixed colors is going to be after the Van Lin content browns the soap. So um, we'll see if this turns out. It's always a surprise at the very end and what happens. Um, but I do have these paint chips and these are all varieties of browns. Some of them are reds but I think that they're really compatible with browns. And I also don't want a soap that is so brown that it browns the water. So let's show you first uh, just pretty much straight out brown. And I like that color but again in soap if you have the whole bar, that dark brown, it's going to bleed. I don't mind the bleeding so much, but design-wise it's also a challenge to make it interesting. What do you do with brown? So I've also mixed some browns with white for more of a milk chocolate, chocolate milk color. I'm still really not much sure myself what I'm going to do with this. I'm just getting some colors out there to show you how I plan. This one is uh, brown with some red and a little purple. Because I'm looking at this paint chip right here and I'm thinking, oh, I like that color. I'm show you on the color wheel that there are ways to get brown by mixing opposite colors, but the richest browns tend to have oranges and reds in it. So just to show you how this works, if you have your own color wheel, colors across the wheel from each other are complementary colors, and if you mix them you get a browning effect. But there are some colors that have a better, richer brown as we know it. Probably want some white in there too. And just show you a little bit of how I mix some of these colors. So here's a straight out brown. Here's some white in that. Show you what a little dab of red will do. Reddish brown. And what a little purple will do. That's essentially how I got this one. The only difference is there's a little white in there. And then I'm going to um, have to exclude the fragrance from the white if I want it to stay white. And it's going a little closer. I want it to stay white. I'm going to keep the fragrance out of that part of the soap. So that's what I have to work with. Um, might toss another color in there just to brighten things up like an orangey brown not too bright like me sometimes, not too bright I try to hide that though that's actually a nice color, warms it up a bit so anyway let's see what I'm going to do, I don't know yet but this helps me figure things out Okay, is everybody ready? I'm not sure I am. There's lots to remember in this one because I chose to do so much in terms of color and some of the colors don't get the fragrance because I don't want it to brown. So let's just jump in here. Except I do want to blend the butters. And I've got cocoa butter in here 
and cream. Okay, that looks pretty rich already. Let's add the lion silk. Okay, let's get the first part poured without the fragrance, and that's my white because I don't want that to turn brown. Let's give you a better view first. So there's my white, and this is a gold to stand for the amber. Put those aside, and the rest is going to be fragranced. And this does smell really chocolatey with a amber touch to it. I also have a gold mica drizzle for this. Then I'm going to have some white again. This is going to be like a milk chocolate because it will brown. And my other colors are purple, red, and white. Remember me talking about that pink chips idea? This is my orangey brown. Get more of that. And then I'm going to use cocoa powder to color the smallest amount. What should we blend first? We'll probably start with the lightest, which is the white. Orange and white. That's not going to be the color it ends up with, that's for sure. Let me get this, which is the Amber. This will be the milk chocolate. And finally, dark chocolate. So the majority of this. Okay, it's not accelerating. So this is going to be my milk chocolate. I'll get a um, bunch of that in. There's something I didn't blend yet, so I better do that. So let's see. What I'm going to do is make things up as I go along. Milk chocolate. Dark chocolate. I hope this does what I hope it'll do. In any case, there will be some color variation, which is the most important thing. So whatever it does on its own, I'll have to live with. I'm pouring closer to the top now so everything's visible. This is the white. I want, the idea here is I want to get color throughout the bars. So this is basically what's hidden. And the rest I want to do an in the pot swirl. I have a particular look in mind for this soap. So this color reminds me of those lavender chocolates. It's got that look to it. The 
this is my milk chocolate, I believe. And I'm going to end on my lighter colors. My amber. And the white. Just give that a little bit of a stir. Let me pound this down. Just like a circle in here. I think you see my idea of how I've done the last couple soaps with uh, like the vibrant amber. There's a little design on top. I want something interesting there. And finally I've got my gold drizzle. Drop this from high. I can see the patterns in the soap. So wherever there's something not quite so interesting, I can make sure I get more of this gold drizzle in there. Let's get the dividers in. And this is a bigger batch than some of the things I've done before the cucumber melon is the same size batch so that the bars are thicker. They're smaller length and width but they are thicker bars. Okay so this has been the making of chocolate amber. So you can see that better and we'll see how this turns out when I am molding. I really like how this chocolate amber soap came out. Again it's a lot of guesswork and knowing how the browning effect is going to influence your color choices and the amount of colors you put in the soap. You can just kind of learn this stuff from repeated uses of the same fragrance. So let's get this out of there. This one fell out already. So it definitely has a variety of browns in it, and that's what I was hoping for. But I thought that that gold mica that I've been using in this type of pour would really work. I mean, chocolate and gold, that's like a winning combination, I think. So these need to be cleaned up, of course. Kind of a weird smile on that one. Let's see if I can turn this upside down so we can see the soaps. This is about the time that these come out. So this is sat for two full days, so some of the browning took place, but with time a little more will happen, so I hope it won't disturb the design I have. And if you can see that little wave on the top there, I like that. And here's my last one. Okay, this has been Clyde at Vibrant Soap. Thanks for watching. This has been the unmolding of chocolate amber and I really love this scent. It's a decadent soap with cocoa butter and cocoa powder and that great chocolate amber fragrance that I learned about through Kevin Divine at Divinely Designed. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye everyone.